Yeah, so in this problem, what you're looking at is a diagram of a thrust reverser of a turbofan engine. And the air, I'm showing you two views. This is a, a view down the front of the engine. Air is drawn into this, uh, into the fan, so into the screen at this location. And from the side view, we're looking at the fan as well, and air is drawn from left to right through the fan, through the back of the engine. And when an airplane lands, it will close uh, doors on the back side of the engine instead of directing the thrust straight back backwards to propel the airplane forward, it redirects the thrust and the air in the engine it curves backwards in this direction and it pushes the air towards the front of the airplane and it slows it down. In this problem, with some parameters that are available to you, we want to calculate how big is this uh, uh, reverse thrust? How much thrust is developed? One thing that we know is that the diameter of the fan is 2 meters. And we know that the engine is drawing in a mass flow rate of air of 500 kilograms per second. The air flows through the engine and it's deflected by an angle of 60 degrees from the horizontal. The velocity exiting through the thrust reverses, we'll call it V2, is three times the magnitude of the velocity entering the engine, which we'll call, here's the magnitude of the velocity coming in, which we'll call V1. What's a little bit tough to see from this diagram is not only is the air being deflected in this direction, it's also being deflected uh, 60 degrees uh, a part of the engine away from you out, out of the screen and part of the engine into the screen. We can visualize that maybe by looking uh, straight at the engine with this diagram on the left. The air is uh, flowing out at you and away from the engine at an angle of 60 degrees. And that's convenient in this problem because we don't have to worry about uh, thrust uh, developing asymmetrically or a thrust developing more in the vertical direction or the uh, lower di uh, direction, in the y direction, or in the z direction into or out of the screen. We only need to worry about thrust being developed in the horizontal or x direction. So let's begin this problem by drawing a control volume. And I'm going to draw it around the thrust reversers. And as I'm drawing it, uh, just for convenience to make our lives easy, I'm drawing the control volume everywhere that is everywhere perpendicular to the flow. So I'm going to draw it straight along that fan. I'll come back and close it off in that direction. And in three dimensions, this control volume, uh, you could imagine it would be um, I'm trying to draw it uh, all the way around the engine itself, but in all locations I'm drawing the control volume so that it is perpendicular to the flow. And here I've drawn, uh, brought in the equation, uh, momentum equation in the x direction, and because I only care about the x direction I haven't included the y and the z directions. Uh, one thing that's going on is that this problem is at steady state, and under steady state conditions this time derivative will go to zero. So what we need to do is brainstorm all of the uh, forces acting on the control volume and then uh, identify fluid locations where fluid flows into and out of the control volume. Now the only force acting on the control volume is the force of the thrust reversers on the air. And that'll look, uh, that uh, force will occur on this back region of the engine. And what it does, what it serves to do, is I've got negative momentum entering the engine uh, I've got momentum in the negative x direction entering the engine, and it leaves the engine. It has momentum in both the positive and negative y direction, but more importantly, it, it now contains momentum in the positive x direction. So it's gained, it certainly gained quite a bit of momentum. And what we'll find is that the net force acting on the air, or acting on the control volume, is actually in the positive direction. And that may seem strange because the airplane is flying, it's landing, and it's flying from left to right. It's the velocity of the airplane is from left to right. So to slow the airplane down, we would expect, we, we certainly would hope that there would be some force, uh, a reverse uh, force acting on the airplane to the left to accelerate it uh, in the negative direction or slow it down. But what we'll find when we work with this equation is that we'll find a force acting on the air in the positive direction. And by Newton's third law, it means that the air is acting on the thrust reversers in the negative direction. So let's write it out. Here's the force, let's say the force of the reversers acting on the air. And that force is the only force acting on the air. It's the only uh, thing that the air encounters as it flows through. You note that the sum of forces is not zero in this case. It's not a static problem. And now let's identify where air crosses the control volume. It crosses, of course, it passes through the fan at the entrance and then exits the control volume 
at a location uh, exits through the thrust reversers. And I've called these locations 1 and location 2. So let's break this area integral up into two separate area integrals. The first one will integrate over the surface area of the fan. So we'll say u rho uh, v dot n dA for the fan. And then surface 2 is the thrust reversers and will integrate the same equation uh, over the area of the reverser. Let's evaluate the dot products at these two surface areas. If we examine the fan again, surface area 1, here's the unit normal, n1, and thus v1 dot n1 is equal, because the arrows are acting in opposite directions, is equal to the negative magnitude of the velocity coming into the engine. And if we examine the second surface area, the unit normal on area 2 is acting in the exact same direction as the velocity. So v2 dot n2 is equal to the magnitude of the velocity coming out of the reversers. What we also need to find are the x components of the velocity at locations 1 and 2. We need to find uh, little u1, for example. In this case, the velocity v1 is acting only in the negative x direction. So u1 is equal to negative the magnitude of v1. In, U, in v2 or area 2, u2, the x component, is acting in the positive v2 direction, but we need a cosine theta in there to account for the fact that only some of the air velocity is acting in the x direction. So if, for example, theta went to 90 degrees, if the uh, reverses they directed the thrust straight up and down, u2 in that case would equal zero. And we can also say that because v2, the magnitude of the velocity, is three times the magnitude of the velocity entering the fan, we can make that substitution right now and say that u2 is equal to three times the magnitude of v1 cosine theta. So let's come back to this integral. Because I know the velocity u is uniform over, cro over the fan, over the cross-sectional area of 1, this u can come out of this integral. The density of air, let's say it's constant, it can also come out of the integral. And v dot n are also constant because of that uniform velocity, and they come out of the first integral. And we can say that these, uh, all three of these can come out of the second integral as well. So I can write this, I'll say evaluating integral 1 over the first surface area is u1 rho times, and be careful with the signs now, the negative magnitude of v1 times a1 plus the second integral is u2 rho now times the positive magnitude magnitude of v2 times a2. What I can also note is the simplification that the mass flow rate is equal to the density of the air times the magnitude of the velocity coming into the engine times a1. And that mass flow rate has to, all the mass coming into the engine has got to leave through the thrust reversers. And that's equal to the density of the air times the magnitude of the velocity at v2 times a2. And I'm going to make that substitution on both of these terms and I'll come up with uh, an expression for the thrust of the reversers acting on the air is equal to negative m dot times u1 plus m dot times u2. What I also know is that u1 is equal to the negative, the magnitude of the velocity entering the engine, and that's equal to a negative, and I'll use q1 for the volumetric flow rate, divided by the area of that fan, and that volumetric flow rate, I can express that as the mass flow rate divided by the density times A1. So here I've got U1 expressed now again in a mass flow rate, which we know, the air density, which we'll know, and then the area of that fan. And I know that U2 is equal to 3 times the magnitude of the velocity entering the fan times the cosine of theta. That then is equal to 3m dot over rho A1 cosine theta. So I'm going to make this substitution for U1 and this substitution for U2, and I'll simplify it. And I'll come up with a simplified expression for the force of the thrust reversers on the air. Making the substitution and factoring out uh, m dot squared, what I find is that the force of the reversers acting on the air scales with the mass flow rate to the second power. So finally, what's important to note, if we use Newton's third law arguments, the force of what we're interested in is the force of the reversers on the airplane, because it's the force of the reversers attached to the airplane that actually slow it down. And that'll equal, that'll be exactly equivalent to the force of the air acting on the reversers, and that's equal to the negative of the force of the reversers acting on the air, which is what we found by this, uh, by this analysis. And it's just the negative of this uh, expression here. So finally, with numbers, is a value of negative 200,000 newtons. And this is equivalent to negative to 45,000 pounds acting in the negative x direction.